Most Australians believe that owning a property will see them through to a decent retirement. But new research shows that up to 94% of us could fall short. It's time to start thinking differently about money. It's time to learn from the Money Masters. I've spent the last 18 years building a business that brings the financial services industry closer to you. We've been training top financial advisors from all over Australia with lessons from the best money managers across the globe. If it's one thing I've learned, there's no such thing as fast money. And the way most Australians think about their money and their future means they're not going to get the retirement they deserve. We all know Australia is the lucky country and most of us are going to live a lot longer than the generations that have come before us. So how are we going to use that time and how are we going to pay for it? Most of us need help to build that plan. Former soapy star Blair McDonough is no different. He's renovating his house in Byron Bay and he has an investment property. But what Blair doesn't know yet is that this property strategy is not going to be enough to get the future he and his young family are dreaming of. So we're about to give Blair the opportunity of a lifetime. We're taking him to meet some of the top money masters from around the globe. And Blair's going to learn how to get the future he wants outside of building his wealth through property. I think you know, finance is such a, a challenging part of life for, for all of us. And I, I think it's something that um, you know, the more I immerse myself in, I think I'll uncover many things that I didn't know, even interests in, in how to get to those positions. I don't have many friends in finance or anything, so to come from uh, my position in life. In childhood, I started off in the northeastern outskirts of Melbourne in the country, having a really nice upbringing on some property there. My dad was in steel production management at BHP, but he was there for Oh, over 25 years. Dad working in that corporate lifestyle. And at five years old, my dad got a placement in Singapore. So we all moved overseas. And that was a huge culture shock. I guess my first big adventure at five was to go to a new country and go to a new school and meet all these new cultures. So that happened two times throughout my childhood. We moved back to Australia, went back to our old house, moved back to Singapore again. So we were around a bit until we finally landed back in Australia and I finished high school, and then my world changed when I was 19 and got accepted to a TV show. From the big brother as a 19, I turned 20 in the house, it was unbelievable. It's jaw-dropping how big it was at the time for me. Um, the opportunity I got two weeks out of there to join Neighbours was, was just unbelievable. We live in Byron Bay, which is lovely. We've been there for about 18 months. Got a fantastic little girl, Lenny, who's running around and teaching us lessons every day. And my beautiful wife, Christy. And we've got one on the way too, so that family's about to grow, which is very exciting. Um, I'm just gonna process for a little bit first. I don't, I don't know um, quite what the next step is. Christy and I have never really sit down and analyze it that deeply, which is frightening because you know, you start to realise you're getting older and things are changing. Young families, everyone who's been there and knows it's a, it's a bit of work to get through the start, but when we get through it, you know, there's just endless opportunities out there. Hopefully it all works out. That's my positive vibe. That financial reality of having two kids and a wife that's not working because of having maternity leave, I don't think he's come to grips with that yet and I don't think he's really got a plan for how that's going to happen. Perfect timing for Blair to get real, but I think this is the wake-up call he needs to know that the later stuff ain't gonna happen unless he starts thinking about that now. Next, Blair opens up about his hopes and dreams for the future, but can he afford them? It is, it's a beautiful lifestyle, it's really nice, um, but whether we can sustain that, only time we can tell. Thank you. 
earlier, we met former soapy star Blair McDonough. With a house by the beach and a beautiful young family, is Blair living the dream or is his head in the clouds? To work out whether Blair can actually afford his dreams, we're bringing in one of Australia's leading financial advisors, Simon Clifford. Simon is an expert at helping Australians reach financial freedom. What will Simon think of Blair's dreams for the future? You know when you learn something that you probably already knew? I think it's just that reinforcement at times of, of certain strategies are, are not as bad or as good as you thought they are. I think it's just, if I can find some reinforcement in the trajectory that we're heading, it's kind of, it's the mesh of, you know, these are our goals and, you know, this is our finance and, and trying to make them all work together. If he doesn't start doing something soon financially, then, you know, he's gonna miss out on that benefit of wealth accumulating over time. You know, what do you want to do with your family? Like, tell me about your hopes and dreams now. I guess the first 10 years of my career from 19 to probably 30 were, were just non-stop. And then I met my now wife, Christy, and, and I've had a family. Just the shift in focus and the shift in personal development and, and my life goals have completely changed from that. It's that stage in life, I'm, I guess I'm, I'm at the crossroads now where my second baby is due very soon and, and how it affects career and how it affects life and, and our position as well. Christy's done an amazing job in my downtimes in our, in our marriage. She wants to be a mum too and have her time. It's, it's hard to answer, hopes and dreams. I, I, like I said before, I'm, I'm a bit reactive. Um, and maybe I need to address that. Yeah, I, it's definitely a, a, a big red flag in my existence, the uh, I want everything now. I've always probably moved locations to give me the stimulus to, to keep on keeping on um, because I've been so fortunate to live in so many places that it's given me a really nice perspective um, of the world and cultures and stuff that I really value. So I would like that as the core purpose um, of, of our family, seeing the cultures and experiencing them. It's just something I want to give to them. Of course, we'd love to do that once a year, possibly to do that for a week to a month if we could. It's something I would work probably very hard for in my goal is to, to supply. Hmm. And you already live in Byron, right? So it's yeah. pretty ideal that you're almost like on a permanent holiday living there. <laughs> Look, it's it is, it's a beautiful lifestyle. It's, um, it's, it's really, really nice. Um, but whether we can sustain that, only time we can tell. Now that you've got Lenny and another one on the way, like, does it make you want to take less risk? Not really, no. Okay. I, every element within risk, there's there's a bit of that, it makes your heart tick and it makes you... Feel alive. Yeah, and it, but it also stimulates me to think differently. If I keep taking the path of the, everyone's beaten, I find I get bored, I really do. It was really great exploring what it is that's important to Blair and what drives him in life. That's such an important part of the financial planning process is knowing what it is that's going to make somebody be driven towards achieving something and what outcomes they're looking for. Part of acting, I imagine it's pretty seasonal. Yes. Sometimes you're earning, sometimes you're not, looking for the next gig. What's that like? It is, it's something I, I've struggled with probably since I ever left Neighbours. It's always been one of those things. Do I just let it go and find um, something a bit more structured. The things he's focused on have been very short term, very what's next. It's been a really engaging and spontaneous way to live. I can't let go. I, I really do enjoy what it is. I, I have a passion for what it does to me and what I can bring to it, whether it's going to suit my family life and my hopes and dreams. But there's an inherent part of myself I've got to look after too and satisfy and that career choice is probably a, a bit of that, so. Mm. Now, I heard a bit of pain in your voice when you said, I can't let go. Mm. I mean, talk to me about that. That means you wanted to, you oh, thought you should. I've thrown my toes out of the cot many times. So it's like, that's it, I'm done, table over, I'm out, no more. And done. what do you do then? Do you do building your thing then yeah, full time? Yeah, I go, go and labour for a while and I'm doing a course at the moment to get my builder's licence. So I'm, yeah, right. you know, I'm trying to push myself into those more stable regions of life. That's kind of, maybe an internal trade-off I'm giving myself, is to find a more structured, stable, possible career choice that can allow me my little flirt with art on the side. It's also part of partnership though, yes. isn't it? 
He hasn't put it down on paper. He probably hasn't talked it through with Christy. And Christy's probably got a, a slightly different plan in her mind as well. It's those moments in a household when you find that a, a husband and wife will have a little bit of a clash from time to time. Money's one of those things that, you know, everybody wants but no one really wants to talk about. You hold your cards close to your chest when it's your finances because it's, I don't know, because for a long time people have equated that with your status in society. It's very true, isn't and, it? Um, Especially when you're a celebrity, right? Yeah, exactly. So... There's, there's a big onus on living the perfect life and yeah. it's not. It's really hard. Blair recognises that it's not going to be easy and you can see he's uncomfortable. He is uncomfortable with this process, which isn't unusual with what I do with clients. Often they haven't, you know, most clients come to me and they haven't got a plan. So I think the big thing for us to work on, Simon, is this concept of now versus later, mm. because some of the stuff you can have now, but there's obviously stuff that's gonna have to come later, whether that be the travel or whatever it is. And um, I think that's gonna be the big challenge in this financial plan for Blair, is how much can he accept will have to come later versus how much he can have now. He knows that he probably can't be quite as off the cuff as what he's been in the past. But he now needs to probably broaden his focus and think about the longer term and what that means for him financially. So, you know, Simon's got his work cut out for him because Blair said, I don't like to plan. Simon's a planner. So it's going to be an interesting combination. Coming up next, Simon is going to put a cost to Blair's dreams. Can he have everything he wants now or anything at all? As I stand here on the street I grew up on, it feels very bittersweet. In my mind's eye, I can still see my dad walking down this road, walking our dog. And in reality, Dad will never do that again. He's in the last years of his life, he's elderly. And it really hits home to me how little time we really have. It's time to start thinking now about the future. My dad worked in the mines here in Gunnedah and he always gave me this huge sense of belief in myself that I could achieve anything that with hard work, you know, I could be whatever I wanted. That attitude combined with my mum's amazing discipline and work ethic to do everything to the best of my ability, you know, really drove me to want to achieve. I've realised so many of the things that made me a real foundation to build a great life have set me up for who I am today. But I've also realised that a lot of the beliefs I grew up with have had to change about the things that I've wanted versus the things that I've needed, about, you know, working hard just isn't always enough, and about the fact that time stops for no man and decisions I make are really going to define how I live that next phase of my life. Earlier, Blair opened up about his hopes and dreams for the future. Like many of us, Blair wants the best for his family, but he's still looking for his next big break in his career. Now's the time to get real, as our advisor Simon puts a cost to Blair's dreams. Well, now comes the fun part. I don't know if it's the fun <laughs> yeah. or the horrifying part, but you've got some big dreams. You've had an interesting life to date, and we all want that to continue for you. But with every dream comes a price tag. So now Simon's going to get down to the numbers and actually put a cost to what the dreams are and see how we go. Right. You don't look too excited. What's going I'm, on? I'm apprehensive. I don't know. I, I guess uh, fear of the unknown. And um, I mean, yeah, I do have big hopes and dreams and I do realise that uh, that comes at a cost and I guess our current situation, I can see how that would be tricky but please give me good news. <laughs> Through the discussion that we've been having with Vanessa, there were a few core things that struck me that really matter to you. Through the sessions that we've done and, and talking to you and Christy, what we identified was what some of those dreams and goals are travel and your lifestyle, your family and the kids, and your entertainment career. And I've spent a little bit of time 
costing them out, just to give you some idea on the lump sums that you might be looking at. I've identified it into the now and then later. Okay. We identified that your lifestyle, it's not overly extravagant, probably $50,000 a year. Maternity leave, so Christy's not going to be in the workforce. There's going to be some, some lost cash flow there and other expenses we've identified as 60000 That's an interesting thing to put a cost to maternity leave, yeah. right? Because you never think that. Well, you you never of, put a dollar sign against baby. You just think that you're baby. not going to earn it, but you yeah. don't realise that it's actually it's, going to cost you as well. Yeah, it so, is. Yeah. You are also talking about an overseas trip for a wedding. That was going to be another $15,000. All of this came to $260,000 in the next year. Is that more than you expected? I just blank it out. I don't think about it. I try yeah. not to think about it. And, you know, if I, I could have done these numbers as well and probably come to that quite quickly, but I've just been uh, professionally ignorant of trying not to accept it, I guess. That's where you've got the clash of the cash flow. It's not knowing when that next job is going to be, how long it's going to be for and how much it's going to pay. I looked at your numbers going forward over the next 10 years and Christy's going to go back to work and so you'll now have two kids in daycare. There's about $75,000 over four or five years that we have to find that you're not currently wow. spending money on at the moment. You live in Byron Bay, so you virtually live in the, the land of holiday, but we then talked about some overseas travel and that was something that's important to you. So we identified three or four trips of about $60,000 over the next five or six years. And that two million for retirement, I mean, is that because you've costed Blair wants the cool, crazy retirement lifestyle? Like, what sort of life is that for two million bucks? That's probably probably net $80,000 a year for the rest of your life. When the age pension was originally bought in, life expectancy numbers were so much shorter. You finished working at 60, 65, and you weren't actually expected to live a lot longer than, you know, another five years. How does that feel? Yeah, it's big numbers, and yeah, the, the now to one year business is, that's confronting. So 80 grand a year, you need two million bucks to retire on? Pretty well, yeah, yeah. Then Blair won't rely on a pension, or, you know, obviously that's not a plan for people our age. Like, there is going to be no comfort in the pension. Being a self-funded retiree is definitely what we should all be aiming for to try and achieve, and I think you've got to have a plan of how you're going to get there. It just doesn't happen overnight. Simon has put a cost to Blair's dreams, and it's tough times ahead for Blair. He needs 260 grand for now, and three million for later, including two million for a comfortable retirement. We know Blair can't have his cake and eat it too, but does Blair? After the break, watch it all sink in as Blair discovers his future is in jeopardy. Quite frankly, at the moment, I don't think that you've got a plan and you're probably on the way to falling short. We know Blair's future is in jeopardy if he doesn't start planning ahead and change his relationship with money. Now's the time for Simon to break it to Blair and tell him what's wrong with the way he thinks about money. It's been an interesting process. We've loved getting to know your hopes and dreams. I think the game changer has been Simon actually costing those hopes and dreams. But I think Simon's diagnosis of your financial situation will probably be a bit of a wake up call. Quite frankly, at the moment, I don't think that you've got a plan and you're probably on the way to falling short or coming across some hurdles and some difficulties that could probably be avoided. Yeah, that's the, we've been living kind of day to day for, for the beginning of it all. We need to have a look at your debt situation because that is probably a bit high at the moment and that's one of those things that's going to add to the strain of your cash flow and ultimately your relationship and also it can back you into a corner. What you're going to learn is another alternative to the structure you've got. We need some flexibility in your stage of your life to be able to adjust the sales accordingly as things come up and as your dreams unfold. Yeah, and the numbers, I mean, it's hard for me to get, you know, those, those other numbers, but they just don't seem so tangible to me. Yeah, well, I think it's probably now time to make them real. Probably should. You know, Simon could probably tell you some horror stories of marriage breakdown, crisis with kids, when kids get sick, when life happens to you, when you don't have a plan. And you've already said it to Simon, oh, I'll just block it out, it'll work itself out. Nine times out of ten, it doesn't work itself out. You know, and none of us want to see that for you. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just never been told that before. Yeah. Um, we're rooting for you to make the right choices, but you know, I can tell by the concern on Simon's face, like three million bucks is no small amount of money. And you know, you have time, but 
now's the time to pay attention. You have been focusing a lot on yourself, your career obviously, which is what you're trying to pursue. You've had some success with properties in the past, but obviously that's putting a lot of eggs in the one basket. Having a fantastic property is great, but if you need $100,000, you can't go and sell the garage. We need to look at that diversification, make sure we've got an income stream coming through. What you need to be doing is you need to become an investor, having a bit more flexibility, but also generating income at the same time, a passive income that comes in regularly that you can really utilise, and it can be tax effective as well. And what excites me about that is that we can then start talking about, well, let's put together a financial plan. You know, getting these numbers is confronting, I'll, I'll admit that. Um, as much as I say I turned a blind eye, it's always going to be there. I can't un unhear that now, you've told me so. Got a lot to learn. Yeah, you do, but look, that's why Simon does what he does. He's a financial planner. He'll build that plan for you, but first, he needs you to go away and learn so that when you build that plan, you know why you're sticking to it. I'm genuinely excited about what you're about to embark on and the learnings that you're going to get from that. I keep talking about these building blocks. Let's start talking about this short term debt that you've got, the cash flow shortfall you've got this year. Let's talk about the medium term. Let's talk about the long term and how are these conversations and this learning going to come together so that we can put that in a, a blueprint of what your life could look like or should look like over the next one, three, ten years and beyond. Okay. Really exciting. Simon's diagnosis has really hit home and for me to get to where I want to get financially, I realise that my building strategies are probably not going to get me there the way that I would like for myself and my family. So whether it's flipping houses or doing some building, it's probably not going to work to get me to the destination I want to be. So I've got to take everything I can and learn everything I can and, and really make a a good effort of becoming an investor. Next week on Learn From The Money Masters, we're taking Blair to meet some of the most successful money managers from around the world. So as a value investor, the price you pay is actually really important. Remember, everyone's financial situation is different. The information in this show is not intended as personal investment advice. We encourage you to find your own personal advisor who can help you with your own financial future. Visit theinvestmentseries.com.au to find out how.